Hi everyone, my name is Melissa, and in this video I want to go over my approach to the Conditional Index Challenge by Bahavya Gupta. The task is to add an index number that restarts for each ID and begins in the row after the values in the date column hits 90 or greater than 90. If you haven't participated yet and want to give this a go yourself, I highly recommend it. It's loads of fun. You'll find the link in the description of this video. Alright, let's go to the Power Query Editor. I'm going to start with a group by on the ID column, because that will return a table with unique ID values. Now there are three places where you can find group by. So it's in the Transform section, on the Home tab, on the Transform tab, it's in the table section right here, but you can also right click a column header and find group by there. So it opens this dialog and you can do all kinds of aggregations here, but I only want to segment my data. Therefore, I'll choose the operation all rows and I'll also rename that column T. Press OK. Perfect. So clicking off to the side in the white space will show another preview section down below. So let's do that. Click here and we get this additional preview section. Now we know the information that we're getting. So let's open the advanced edit the window. I'm going to create some intermediate calculations to gradually build out my logic. For that, I'll need a nested let expression. So I can create variables and assign values to them. So after the each word here, I'll press enter. Enter that let. Now the first thing I want to know is how many rows are in my nested table. I'll create a variable called C. And basically I have two options here. I can either use the function table.rowCount or list that count. It doesn't matter which you pick, but I'll go for table that row count. So table row count. There it is. Press tab to select it and enter that underscore. Comma. Next, I want to learn where in the days column we are meeting that greater than or equal to 90 days criteria. So n equals list position of this takes a list as first parameter and a value to match as second. We will be looking in our days column, so days. But for the value to match, that won't be a fixed value, right? Because we're looking for anything that's equal to 90 or greater than that value. So we have to do a bit of work here. So what I'll do is I'll use list.transform to transform the values in our days column to either true or false based on that condition. So here I'll add list.transform. We'll work through the days column and we'll say each each value in my list greater than or equal to 90. So this will now return a list with trues and falses. So my matching condition for list opposition of is anything that equals to true. So comma, true. Close that off, enter a comma. Let's go to a new line. Now n will return the position where the value meets that 90 days criteria, right? But we have to start our index from the row after that. So what I'll do is I'll add one to the result of list opposition of. So plus one. Now I'll create a generic list with indexes. So let's call that i equals Use the list initializers, that's those curly brackets. We'll start from one all the way to the last row in my table. So to the value of C, comma. 
going to use some conditional logic here. Because list opposition of will return minus 1 if a condition isn't met. Then because I'm adding 1 back, that minus 1 will be turned into a 0, which is a valid position in a list. To deal with that, I'm going to have to create a condition. If n is greater than 0, that means we found a value of 90 or above, I'm going to create a list with nulls until we hit that value of n. So list repeat. We'll enter a list with a null value. And we'll repeat that n times. Now after this point, our index should start. So what I can do is I can combine my list with index values to the list that I've just created. So ampersand and call my list with indexes. Now this of course will generate a list that can be larger than the number of rows that I have in my table. So I need to restrict the number of elements in it. Let's do that. List first n, comma, c. So that's the number of rows in our table. So this ensures that the number of elements in the list that we're creating, that we're generating, is never larger than the number of rows that we had in the table. Now, if there isn't a valid value for n, we only have to create a list with nulls. So else, and I can just copy the syntax here, but instead of n, we want the number of rows in the table, right? So I'll change that into C. Perfect. Press enter. Add the in clause. Let's format this a bit. Right. So now we can construct a table with the data that we require for the output. So table from columns. It wants lists as a list for each of the columns. So with those curly brackets, I can place my list inside it. Now my first list that I want to return from that table T is the days column. So we'll refer to days. And the second list that we need to add to this table is the list R. So R, comma, And that will return a type table. Now our first column, that is our days column. So we'll call that days, which is a type number. And the second column, that will be the output, which is also a type number. Close off our function. Perfect. So let's see what this returns. We'll click off to the side in the white space. And let's test the result. So this is the first instance where we hit 90. And in the next row, our index starts. Perfect. So now we can expand those nested tables. And we're done. In this video, you've seen my approach to the conditional index challenge. I hope you've enjoyed this one. Thank you so much for watching. All the best. Hey everyone. Thanks for tuning in to Enterprise DNA TV. If you enjoyed the contents covered in this particular tutorial, please throw the video a like. It really helps us and we really appreciate it. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Enterprise DNA TV channel. Uh, we have a huge amount of content coming out all the time from myself and a range of content creators, uh, all dedicated to improving the way that you use Power BI and the Power Platform. Lastly, check out Enterprise DNA's website, plenty of resources 
and further learning that you can access very easily. All the best. Take care.